built in such a way that it could even be ahead. So depending on how the bracket goes, yeah, it doesn't depend on the bracket. Right. Um, we're gonna go take a quick look at the deck lists as well. Right. So let's. L seems to be in a tough spot unless taxes. All its other three times. <laughs> yeah, somehow. Uh, um, oh, that's too big. Although we did see the L's player beat Miracles. Yeah, uh, in one of the rounds. Okay. But yeah. Right. So I'm actually pretty glad that Storm's in the top eight. Dude. That's pretty cool. Um, Storm's been a deck yeah. that's been, you know, it's it's gotten a lot of disrespect lately because uh -huh. of just Eldrazi in the format and how that's, you know, it's sort of almost kicked it out, sort of. So I'm glad to see that, you know, there's at least one copy, you know, representing Speaking of which, Eldrazi was the most played deck on day two. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But there were none in the top eight. Interesting. Maybe, maybe a couple players just missed out on breakers. I think the cutoff would have been 13 and two. Uh -huh. We'll go ahead and take a look after uh, sure, we yeah. finish everything. We can do a wrap-up and look at all the other decks that <laughs> did well. Um, you, know what else that, you know what else is missing from the top eight? A certain, Delver. <laughs> a certain one mana 3 so, 2. Yeah, Delver was the most played deck on day 2 if you add up like Grixis Delver, Bug Delver, Blue Red Delver, all the Delvers, but then uh, it didn't make a uh, top 8, so yeah, okay. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you can't read necessarily too much into that. There's yeah, exactly. Or variants or matchup based things that cause that, but it is definitely a little bit surprising. Right. You want to look at yeah, like the top thirty-two if they have it posted. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. yeah, let's just let's quickly go through the deck list. Right. So we'll um, start from. I'm, I'm we, actually, do we know what the first matchup is? Should we just look at that first? Yeah, I think the first matchup is uh, actually Storm versus Show and Tell. So okay, which Show and Tell player? It's not. not it's not. Okay, compared. so let's take a look at those two then. So let's take a look, let's take a look at um, KSK Sato's Sneak and Show deck. Um, Got some weird stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you we were saying, the, Progenitus is like a throwback to 2012. Yeah, exactly. We, we see the, the, the stock for show and tell for sneak attack with the, the typical um, ancient tomb city of traitor soul lands. But as, as Bob and James have mentioned, there's an interesting card in Progenitus. Uh, typically not seen now that, you know, Gristlebrand and Emrakul um, have, have been printed, right? Yeah. So... It's a. Uh, I mean, I guess a show and tell in Progenitus dodges some hate that those other cards would not. It just seems like it's a card that, when you have Seek Attack in play, is not particularly impressive. It exactly. requires two two guys to win, which is not really where you want to be. Mm -hmm. But what is where is Progenitus actually better than, let's say, the other copy of Emerald? Caracas decks, I guess. Yeah, okay. Caracas, Jace. Think of anything else? Okay. Uh, I. That sounds pretty accurate. I mean, what can hit whatever that hits? Everyone. I guess against Painter Servant, they can't mill you out. Ah, if they okay. had, uh, okay. well, I guess they can't do, do that. Yeah, Emerald will do. Emerald's actually. Well, isn't there some weird interaction with Painter Grindstone and Progenitus that's different? It, it becomes a draw or something. You have two. You, have one. you just you it. just have that card be the last card. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. you draw it. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, also, we see that KSK has three copies of Gitaxian Probe in the deck. I think that's very powerful. Just to you know, let you know when it's safe to combo off and uh, mm -hmm. uh, when it's safe or when it's not safe to. Like if your opponent has a Caracas in their hand or some sort of you know big fatty, you may want to divert to the uh, the sneak and sneak attack route instead. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Cyborg and see the relevant cards for the upcoming playing a storm, you said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't see a whole lot there. Maybe we should help. hold off on sideboarding and we can come between. Sure. Okay, yeah, sure. We'll that after. Yeah, we'll, last, we'll thing, last thing I'll point out, not relevant in this matchup, but he does have a Besaju, so if he, if okay. he wins, that'll be really good against me. Right, so this, this Besaju, sure. yeah, will be pretty, very good, actually. He's got one in the sideboard. We'll talk about that we'll later. Yeah. One and then let's look at the Storm deck. All right, so Ryu Takahashi and his Storm list. Um, anything interesting here? So I think when it comes to Storm, the way Storm is uh, operates, it's a deck that... Um, uses spells like Dark Ritual and Cabal Ritual and Lion's Eye Diamond to generate a critical mass of mana, and then it uses um, cards like Infernal Tutor to uh, and Past in Flames to generate a high enough storm count so that you can cast a lethal tendril, tendrils of agony um, for you know twenty plus damage. Mm -hmm. um, typical storm list you'll see copies of four copies of um, Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Infernal Tutor. Um, I guess Lion's Eye Diamond as well, yeah. Um, is there anything special or interesting about this Storm list in particular? I don't think so. Uh, I think the only thing you could point out is the main deck Empty, mm -hmm. which is mainly a concession to the Eldrazi matchup. Okay. Um, but that's not necessarily atypical. Just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a thing people are starting to do now that yeah. people didn't do before. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think 
it's going to be whoever's on the play is probably favored. Okay. Um, it seems this matchup's generally very close. Right. So, and then there's also the spicy dark petition, which is um, the the older spell mastery version of Infernal Tutor, or I guess Demonic Tutor. Newer, right? Yeah. 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 Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The newer, the newer version of that. Cool. So, like you mentioned, we should talk talk, talk about the matchup a little bit. It is a combo versus combo matchup. And um, in this situation, I think the notable differences between both sides, I mean, obviously the goal is for, um, you just want to combo off as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. That being said, one deck has Force of Will while the other one doesn't. How do you mm -hmm. think that impacts the match? Also, it's different, right? Like one deck has six discard skills and the other deck has some counter magic. Okay. Um, so in, in that axis, I'm not sure which one's ahead necessarily. I think counter magic might be a little bit better. Okay. Because um, on therapy, you also if you don't have the pro, you need to you know name the right card. Um, I would say like in general, maybe the show and tell deck has a better nut draw, mm -hmm. but I think Storm's a little bit more consistent. Well, yeah. and also like discard has the advantage of clearing it away for your combo or attacking the opponent's combo. Sure. So you have different ways to disrupt your opponent, or right. it's, it's one avenue of attack, but you're gonna mm -hmm. hurt them either way. Okay. Um, and that's the freedom that Storm has in this matchup. The Seeking Show doesn't really have. They just have reactive counter spells to stop them from countering and then hope they can go off afterwards. Um, right. I think it, this type of matchup often comes down to sideboard cards. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I, sure. I think game one, Storm. So you think Storm, okay. you'd say... I think it's whoever's on the play. Whoever's on the play. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say... Uh, I'm going to say Show and Tell. I think, uh, you know, discard spells... James mentions that they're very good, but one inherent thing about discard spells is that they are actually, they're like a tempo negative play in the sense that you're trading your mana to take a card that, you know, your opponent's not spending mana on. And I think it's possible for the show and tell player to capitalize that and maybe get a little lucky um, to power out like a very explosive start. So let's get to the match and let's see what exactly um, is going to take place. I hope I got the match right. Yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> weird. All right, we got one of them right. All right, and yeah. And then Days. Yeah, have, this guy's a... playing Seeking Show. Okay, and he's playing a Days. I actually yeah, he's playing four days. Four, four days? Four days, four force of will. Do we miss that? I think I missed that, actually. Wow, that makes things... Uh... That's... And he's playing no spell pierce. Uh-huh. Okay. So that his only... Dis I mean, it's... That's, that is interesting. That's gone back and forth. Are you sure he was playing four days? Yeah. Well, okay, wow. I mean, we could check. Yeah, we can just take a Sneak and Show player is going to mulligan, so... Um, so typically, we've seen Sneak and Show go away from days, because although it's free counter magic, which is awesome, the downside to days, you're right, is four days, um, is that you're playing three and four drops, so it can often set you back enough. Um, that being said, if you have it on the combo turn, days is good. Yeah. So... That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it comes down to matchups a lot of the time, too. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, okay, so what I'm hearing is that it makes the turn you, like, you know, that you, you act, it makes that critical turn way more powerful, mm -hmm. but... That's more relevant against blue decks. It's going to be worse against Storm, I gotta imagine. Mm -hmm. um, against Delver decks, you'd rather have days. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So, yeah, that I, doesn't I, help them in this top eight, but... Yeah. <laughs> against yeah. Miracles, I think that will prove to be a little... Uh, yeah. Assuming they're coming. We have to get there first. Now, I, I'm going to imagine that the top eight deck lists were maybe posted in order from first seed to eighth seed, um, especially given that Lou lost the last round. Um, it makes sense. Maybe he was the last one, but uh, maybe. I don't maybe, know. maybe. So if that's any sign of anything, then, um, yeah, right, case like case, might be, case uh, might be on the play. It starts with an island, yeah. yeah we, so the Storm player looks like he had some cantrips, some mana. Uh, I don't know anything He had a tutor. That. Get a Cabal Ritual. <laughs> Actually, here's an important question. So we've described what, how both of these decks combo off, but on average, what turn would you expect one deck to combo off versus the other? Because that's also very relevant, right? I'm going to see a Duress. I expect probably a Brainstorm response. Um, but yeah, the average combo turn for Sneak and Show is, you know, probably... Th Three or four. Sometimes you can do two. Mm -hmm. In Storm, I would say it's the same thing. It's three or four, but sometimes you can do one or two. Let's see what this brainstorm finds us. We see a daze. We see a show and tell and, a, and an ancient tomb. So he could show and tell next turn. What, what, does he have a target? Does he have a. Does he have a. Hard to tell. I can't really see what he has. Right. Maybe we'll get a zoom in um, on the camera. Actually, we'll see the whole hand right now. 
Okay, so it looks like... What is oh, there is a Gristle Brand. Right? Oh, that's, that's the Gristle Brand? Yeah, that's okay. the promo Gristle Brand. Um, so he actually has Show and Tell Gristle Brand next turn. Wow. Uh, that is... So that's going to be game unless... Oh, actually that's just game either way, pretty much. Pretty much game. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. That was interactive. All right. Nice. All right. <laughs> Just, yeah, five so, seconds. So now that he has the Grizzle Brand in play, spells, yeah. uh, he has the Grainstorm, or sorry, the Grizzle Brand in play, he's basically uh, going to be able to counter anything the Storm player does. Right. So I want to point out, if the Storm player had Emrakul, it is, sorry, if the Show and Tell player had Emrakul, it is possible that, you know, the Storm player could use the Mana Acceleration to combo off that very turn. Yep. But because Grizzle Brand will allow you to pay seven to draw seven, there's a high chance that he's going to find, you know, multiple Force of Wills in the in the next 14 cards mm -hmm. to interact with the Storm combo. What makes this even harder is the Force of Wills don't even have to be in his hand right now, and actually they're not in his hand. Right. So discard doesn't really do anything. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, he could win if the Storm player goes off and he doesn't hit Force of Will on the top 14 cards. That's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's hard to... Pull that so off, he has but... both Ad Nauseam and Pass and Flames, How much... but I don't think he has the mana. He has uh, one, two lands, a Lotus Petal, and a Cabal Ritual that's not thresholded. Um, so he's going to need to ponder after this. And I think if the Gristle Brand connects, that makes it even yeah, harder. Yeah, exactly. You just got another draw seven. But I, I, I guess, um, you know, SK's plan will be to just pay 14 life during his main phase, play a sneak attack, and attack with an Emrakul as well, so... Um, that's one of the you know most powerful things about sneak and show as opposed to like another combo deck like reanimator is that your gristle brand I think is a lot is a lot stronger because you can kill them just immediately in the next turn. Oh, yeah. Reanimator you may have to attack a couple times and do a little couple other different things, but to your point, Bob, had the storm player play this game is absolutely that storm player takes think. the show into yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you can't bring it. You can't bring some to hide it. Okay. What's he looking for with this ponder? Is he looking for, like... Ritual. He doesn't have any discard in his hand, right? So... I think you just... You pretend that he doesn't have Force of Will somehow. And I guess you need a Dawes... Or like you, you might need to dodge days too. <laughs> or you can sequence your plays in such a way that you bait him to draw seven with Grizzle Brand before he needs to, and then if you had discard, you can play it at that point to try to take a force of will. Yeah. If he draws one, that I mean, it's looking pretty slim. Yeah. Uh, uh, things have to go wrong, yeah. like horribly wrong. Like, we have ritual? to see misplays. And if he doesn't have a dark that. ritual, a days will also do it here. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, true. it looks like he might. That's true. Good point. Also, that's the risk. If he leads with Dark Ritual right now, would you? He doesn't have Dark Ritual. And... Yeah, um, you, you would play Lotus Petal and then play Dark Ritual, and then oh, he's just gonna okay. not sure. even try. Okay, All right. yeah. I don't think he even had it. Yeah. So he only had a Cabal Ritual and no Dark Ritual. Take five. I think he maybe could have. Uh... W -W -W -W. Well, let's, he had, oh, yeah, he oh, had yeah. Land, Paddle, Cabal Ritual, LED Tutor, so that would have been 3-6 mana, so he could have made like some... Well, should we look at the sideboard real quick? Let's yeah, let's do that. that. I'm going to just quickly pause this, and let's take a look at the sideboards. That was a really fast first match. Um, so, right. Yeah, Sneak and Choke. What do you guys expect? Hmm, all right. Really? <laughs> I mean, Vendillion Click comes in... I think, and I think you'd probably end up bringing in the Echoing Truth to play around empty Torrens. No, nah. I, I well, feel like so, a will, so it's not that bad to have access to one of those cards. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. I would. I don't so, know if it's worth it. But. I think post board we have to evaluate what Sato's role is in this matchup, and I think it's exactly just the same as what it was in the first one, right? You just want to have a clean, lean combo that you can combo off as just as fat, quickly as possible. So you also want to maximize the percentage chance that you can combo with. So I could see an argument for bringing in the Through the Breaches. Um, that's just like another, you know, copy of Show and Tell that could uh, put Gristle Brand into play and, you know, put maybe end the game. That's I do, possible. Yeah. It is slow, though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. It, it is slow. It's not ideal. So th that's the counter argument, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's no point having a 5 mana spell if you're never going to get to the 5 mana to cast it. Um, likewise, there's Vendillion Click, as you mentioned. That's yeah. a... I think Click is the only card that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, the others are, you know, somewhat situational. One reason I might like the Echoing Truth 
uh, I don't know if it's a good enough reason, uh, is Xanid Swarm. Okay. So I actually like Storm a little bit more post sideboard because if you have Xanid Swarm in your hand, that's pseudo show and tell protection. It right. means that if they put in the Grizzle Brand, you can often still beat them um, via True. Xanid Swarm. Right. Um, well, yeah, let's take a look at this Storm side. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, just one real quick question. How do you how do you feel about Vendillion click on the draw for the Sneaking Show? Do you think it matters? I, think I don't think yeah. that matters. Okay. All right. I think yeah, you're you, still enough, you still have enough counter magic. Yeah. Be better than your this, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like, Genesis would just be really slow, right? Um, so I, I, I can definitely see him taking out one creature. Like, um, yeah, back to Storm. So the cards I like in the board, I mm -hmm. like, um, I like Fluster Storm and I like Xanid Swarm for sure. Those are definitely coming in. Question mark to me would be maybe like a Surgical. So mm -hmm. why is Chrome Mox there? Is that to help you cast a Rupture Jay? So or can that also? I think that's for the Eldrazi matchup. Faster. Yeah, I think um, but I guess it might be good here too. I think it would also yeah. be good here too. Yeah. Um, the critical mass. I think I've heard. So I I've, I've listened to Caleb talk. Caleb Scherer talk about um, this deck a little bit. And for for everyone who doesn't know, Caleb Scherer is also, you know, probably the best Storm pilot in the U.S. Um, head to head against Rodrigo would be. Very, very tough uh, to determine. But yeah, Caleb has mentioned that Chrome Mox is gen generally for the decks that um, you can't really go over. Um, like, you know, like with Eldrazi with a Chalice in play or whatever other matchups there are. Um, this lets you. Empty just... the Warrens on turn one. Exactly. Empty the Warrens on turn one. Or, you know, <clears throat> just like it brings down the, um, the critical turn by maybe like, I don't know, half a turn or so on yeah, average, yeah. Which, is, which is still really, really incredible. Um, and it's a good plan. I would probably bring them in just because, I mean, you're against a combo matchup and your role is to, you know, combo off sooner, so... That's tough. I don't know if you want... I don't know what cards we're taking now. Yeah, exactly. I think you can take out the Preordains. Mm -hmm. um, you maybe probably take you out can the trim a land. And, yeah, the question mark is if he wants to leave Empty in because Empty plus Therapy is, is definitely a plan and it's pretty fast as mm -hmm. well. Um... But it, it, it loses yeah. to Grizzlebrand and probably loses to Emrakul, okay. so, so maybe he's taking them out. But then again, the Chrome Mox gets a little bit worse without the Emrakul. Okay. Because Chrome Mox isn't really good at building a critical mass. I could have time preordained, so that's definitely right. Yeah, I could definitely see cutting the preordained. Well, we know the Xantid Swarms and the Fluster Swarms. Yeah, I mean, if I were him, I would maybe just take out the preordains and the Empty for the Xantid Swarms. With Okay, cool. So we'll see what he does. Surgical is also an option. It's a little bit riskier. It's, you know, right. if you can strip the show and tell or whatever and right, surgical right. it. So, um, in well, why else are you playing that card? Um, there are matchups like Black Red Reanimate. Yeah, yeah. Like Great Red Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But, like, in round 15, we saw Death and Taxes versus Sneak and Show, and the Death and Taxes player boarded in Surgical Extraction. I think when we were watching, you mentioned that sometimes they might play that instead of Containment Prius yeah, yeah, yeah. due to Black Red. Um, and one reason I think Surgical Extraction potentially is better in this is that you can actually discard the spells that you may want to snipe with the Surgical Extraction, which is, you know, oh, yeah, the very, very powerful. scenario is going to be really, really strong. It's right. just you don't have the right combination of things. Right. It's actually going to be a blank that makes it less likely that you can. Yeah, and that's a sort of concept that I always like to think about um, in Magic. It's, uh, it's just like the, the ceiling of a card versus the floor of a card, right? Yeah. So in this situation, Surgical Extraction has a very low floor where it does practically nothing, but could potentially have a very high, yeah. uh, high ceiling in that it could just outright win the game. Anyways, let's get to the match, and uh, let's see if um, our predictions on boarding are correct. I'm just... Oh, yeah, you're right. We could probably catch. Uh, no, you could, I think you can speed it up. Okay. Like maybe like 1.5 or 2. Uh, doesn't look like he brought in the card. I think you're just looking at his sideboard. And I don't. I, I think the, um, the through the breaches are also not going to. Be well, so he took out three cards. You can also take out a, our plan. You can also take out a ritual too. Or a ritual. Okay. I guess that's a slightly slower game. Yeah, like you, you don't always have. You don't always have threshold. You could. But I think that slows you down because you'll you'll have four tutors and dark petition for business, um, and pass them playing as well. Empty might be better to have than the dark petition. Maybe empty is certainly like another angle. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that, that angle is if you go empty, like it loses a lot of things. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, empty in combination with discard could be enough to get through. Especially therapy. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. Especially therapy. therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So but yeah. it is risky, also. Like if you don't have the discard or whatever it might be. The good thing about empty is that it makes you a little bit less vulnerable to forcible. Did we, we did we talk about that? Uh, not specifically, but yeah, like because mostly the in your hand. the primary combo is very reliant on like infernal tutor for finding something. So there is like a choke point for um, you know blue counter magic on the show and tell side to uh, target the combo. Um, and it's well, scary to do that. Think that they're on a tutor, not on an empty. Right, so right. It's easier for them. Exactly. Yeah. Information. So it's yeah, just describing how the show, the storm deck works. Generate a bunch of mana using uh, dark rituals, cabal rituals, lion's eye diamonds, and infernal tutors. You can buy back all of these spells. The first infernal, infernal tutor you will usually find a past in flames or an ad nauseum. Past in flames will buy back all the spells that you just cast that turn, except for well, all the instants and sorceries you cast. Not Yagmat's will, um, but then you can you know tutor for tendrils and cast it for like a. Billion storm count. Yep, that's the preferred win you go for. Mm -hmm. uh, ad nauseum is kind of a. Uh, I can go off, but can't quite do this. Yeah. Um, Get turn greater. One thing I I actually kind of want. I'm rooting for the storm player to win because I I, I do I just like like watching uh, really proficient storm players play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, and Caleb, for example. Uh, so I just love seeing because with, with Storm, right? The puzzle, it's just like this intricate puzzle of what do I have to take, what do I have to draw, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it feels a lot more certainly more interesting than yeah, that sneaking yeah. show. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun watching the two different, very different combo decks. One deck cast one spell mm -hmm. and then you win. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Storm by his nature has to cast eight spells right. in order to win. Yeah. Did we see any mind break traps? I don't. I think I saw mine break no, trapped anywhere. But I missed the day, so I, I could have also just missed the mind break track as well. No, there's no mind break. At least not in this card. But there's that I mean, one. They're just talking about cards that are good against them. Well the storm player of the fluster Correct. It's the the surprise show and tell player had a copy of Red Blast. Which it two. It had more than yeah. two kinds of blast. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, it's okay in this matchup. I wouldn't be surprised to see him bring it in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a card I don't think we'll see. Yeah. Um, it's the best, though. <laughs> is it what is this just, one? That's the new one. I think it like exiles uh, All other spells? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's the one that's designed for Eldrazi. It stops the... Is, it, is this the one, Summary Dismissal? It's a standard I so. card, I wouldn't know. Yeah, I that, think so. I, my interpretation was okay, that... Okay, we should uh, slow down yeah. now. Removes the trigger and does stuff. All right, but... so Storm is Flood Strand past. Looks so like we brought in Blast. Yep. And it looks like we might be going for a show and tell. As early as turn two? I saw a Lotus Petal in the hand. Do we see Lotus Petal? Do we see, uh, like, Grizzlebrand or anything? Yep. Looks... I think... I'm not sure, but I think it was a Grizzlebrand. Well, there's... Okay. There's an Ancient here. Otherwise, so. he might have drawn the Emrakul, right? Or the show and tell. So I assume he has a target. Okay. I think Storm has to wait. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if it's Emrakul, then it's... One more turn. One more turn. If it's Grizzlebrand. Yeah, right. One thing I don't like, I don't like that... Um, okay, it looks like we saw Empty still in. Keisuke did not play the Lotus Petal. Yeah, I thought that was a little strange, too. If and you're going to have Red Blast in your deck. If you have Show and Tell and a creature already, I like playing the Lotus Petal because the Red Blast can at least, you know, snipe something from... Yeah, uh, that's their Desperation brain. Right. I think Desperation is kind of brainstorm. Exactly. I mean, and and Storm is a, is just it's naturally okay. like a black base. So it looks deck. like he's setting up for a turn three kill, which okay. might not be good enough here. It, it really depends on if SK has a uh, Grizzlebrand or Emrakul. It mm -hmm. also depends a little bit again if the Storm player has Xanath Swarm. Right. So let's see what the show and tell player on the next turn. Okay, yeah. Right. Turn, turn two show and tell. This might be one of the matches where we do more in analysis than we do on. Oh, he has sneak attack. Um, so he's going to put in sneak attack Grizzle Brand. So he may just be dead here. This looks to be one of those matches where there's more uh, 
analysis and commentary between than, than an actual play. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, so he, basically, the Sneak and Show player now is looking for Lotus Petal and Emrakul, and that's a win. He has Simeon Spirit Guide, and he has guy. Emrakul. Alright, well, there you go. Turn 2 kill. Uh, Pretty solid. No disruption, so that's just going to be it. Cool. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when magic when Seek and Show operates in this way, it's, it seems invincible. The problem right. with the deck is that it can brick and not mm -hmm. necessarily put together these type of draws. Right. But when it does this, not much can beat it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, sometimes we get that stigma in Legacy where it's like a turn one or two format, and uh -huh. these are the kinds of draws that you know sort of suggest that. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, but you know, while there are a lot of upsides like this happens sometimes there's mm -hmm. also you know if somebody spell pierces or stops the initial onslaught then mm -hmm. like uh the deck the deck can stumble yeah. um like that so I'd, I'd be very interested to see how this how so we sorry uh case case deck is the one that has the double besage right yeah yeah so moving forward now that he's in the top four he has the potential to play against three miracles players and besage is an all-star card here Okay, so, well, let's see what the next match is. Yeah, let's go to the next match. Um, oh, whoa. Well, is there a backup ah, match for the first time? <laughs> for the first time. Very nice. Okay, so... You can, like, fast forward. Yeah. 